We're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna be looking at six different camp chairs, and in particular, we're gonna be looking at the Nemo Stargaze Luxury Recliner Chair. We also have the Helinox Chair Zero, the Helinox Ground Chair, the Helinox Beach Chair, also the Alps Mountaineering Chair with a Footrest, as well as the chair I'm sitting in right now, which is the Walmart $15 Ozark Trail Chair. And for each of these chairs, we're gonna quickly go through the tech specs that they have, and also the setup process, as well as the main pros and cons of each chair. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share why out of all of these chairs, I actually think the Ozark Trail $15 Walmart chair is the best choice, at least for me personally. So let's get into it. Let's start with the Helinox Chair Zero. This is a really interesting chair that's made out of a DAC aluminum frame. And the frame itself comes all together with shock cord pieces into these nylon plastic hubs as you can see here and once you get the frame part assembled the fabric of the seat is made out of a ripstop polyester material and it's pretty easy to get on until you get to the last one or two pegs because those are a bit harder because it gets so tight and so it helps to press it against the ground to get everything put together when you actually sit in this chair it is a little bit difficult to get in and out of it because it sits so low to the ground and there's not a lot there to hold on to. And it's also worth mentioning that it's a little bit wobbly on the bottom. And if you press back, the legs of the stool can kind of come up while you're doing that. There's no headrest, of course, but overall, for a chair that only weighs one pound, one ounce without the stuff sack, this is actually a pretty comfortable chair and it would work well for backpacking. And another thing here that is a common complaint is the feet of the chair, which can sink into sand or muddy dirt or something like that. You can get an accessory to solve this problem though, if that's an issue for you. Overall, I think the Helinox Chair Zero is good for people who wanna go backpacking. If you're not going backpacking, then you probably wanna look at another chair, especially because this is so expensive at $130 or so. Next up is the Helinox Ground Chair, and you might have actually never seen this chair before because it's only sold directly by the manufacturer, not at retailers like REI and Backcountry. The assembly of this chair works in a very similar way to the Chair Zero. It has DAC aluminum poles that are all shock corded together and feed into these nylon hubs that are uh, nylon plastic hubs. When you get the fabric part of the chair out, you can tell that it actually has these little silver linings and those go on the top part of the chair, meaning the back of the chair. And that's useful to know because it helps you put the loops in the right place the first time. When it comes to actually sitting in this chair, it is extremely difficult to get in and out of this chair compared to other chairs. And I think that's actually the worst thing about this chair. It's called the ground chair for a reason. And as you can tell, when you sit in it, you're, there's not very much space between you and the ground. This chair weighs about one pound five ounces. So it is a little bit heavier than the chair zero, but it is still light enough to be considered something you could take on a backpacking trip. Overall, I would say it's a little bit less comfortable than the chair zero but still something that is fairly comfortable for how compact and small that it is. The main advantage of the ground chair is the feet of the chair because it's designed in such a way to prevent it from sinking into soft soils as much as the chair zero does. And so if you are a backpacker who wants a chair that they can put in their pack that also isn't gonna sink into soft soils, then this is a good option. However, at $120, I don't think I would actually recommend this chair for any other application. Now we're getting into the cushier car camping chairs here and starting with the Helinox Beach Chair. And so this chair comes in a pretty nice stuff sack and we'll talk about what that does more later, but the assembly of this chair is actually a little bit more involved than the backpacking chairs we've seen previously. You do have to make sure that the feet of the chair are oriented correctly such that the bottom of the feet are facing downwards. And once you get the frame together, then the assembly of the fabric or the installation of the fabric part is pretty much the same as what we've seen in previous Helinox chairs and it still does help to get some leverage on the ground to get that to fit. But this Helinox beach chair has a feature that the other ones haven't had that we've seen so far. The stuff sack actually doubles as a makeshift pillow and it even has uh, some Velcro on the back so that you can fasten it to the back of your chair, adding an extra layer of comfort that the other chairs just didn't have. And so overall, if we talk about comfort, I think this is by far the most comfortable Helinox chair that we've talked about in this video up to this point. This is a heavier chair. It weighs about three pounds, four ounces without the stuff bag. So you definitely wouldn't be taking this on any backpacking trips, but if you're going car camping or say to the beach, it works out pretty well. And it has headrest for the first time of any chair that we've seen here. It has a bit more back support and the frame itself is just a lot more sturdy than something like the chair zero, which tends to wobble a little bit at the bottom of the frame where the feet are. And speaking of the feet, we should just take a quick look at how those are set up because these are also just, they have a flatter construction, which means it's not gonna have as many problems with sinking into sand or soft soil, which is really good for the name application of taking it to the beach or something like that. So overall, I think this is a really comfortable chair. It's good for car camping or days at the beach, but at $170, it is a bit pricey. 
And if you've been enjoying this video so far, please do take a second and just hit that like button for me. That does help my channel out a ton. It only takes you a second to do it, and it does give me the motivation to make more videos like this. So thanks in advance. Now let's talk about the Alps Mountaineering Escape Chair, which is basically an upgraded version of like a standard camping chair. And so let's talk about it in detail. First of all, the setup, it comes in a pretty normal stuff sack and the setup process is quite easy and pretty normal for what you see in sort of a standard camp chair. You just unfold it and it's very easy and quick to do and then you're done. And so we should also talk about the footrest itself because this is probably the first feature of this chair that you'll notice. And it's worth pointing out that it unclips so that you can lower the footrest However, the, the footrest frame, like the metal poles here, are basically hard fastened to the base of the chair. So you can't fully remove it, you can only put it on the ground like this. And then when it comes to the overall comfort of this chair, it has two main features that makes it more comfortable than your standard camp chair. First of all, it has a higher back, and so it goes up above my head as you can see here, and I'm five foot 10. And so that gives some, some head and back slash neck support that you wouldn't get in other chairs. And of course it also has the footrest, which is a nice feature that not a lot of camp chairs have. We should also talk about the materials that this chair is made out of. So this uh, fabric material is a 600 denier polyester, which is it's just a thick polyester material. And then the frame itself is made out of tube steel. And then the feet, as you can see here, are fairly wide and hardy. And so it shouldn't give you too many problems with sinking into dirt or sand or anything like that. So overall, I think this is a really comfortable camp chair. However, I think the main downside of it is for what you get, the price is pretty high at about $90. Now let's talk about the Nemo Stargaze Luxury Recliner. This is the single most comfortable camp chair of any kind that I've ever used. And so let's talk about some of its really interesting features. First of all, the carry bag is actually pretty nice. And as you can see here, it has a little mesh panel on it that allows you to air out the bag if you happen to get it wet, even while you're carrying it around in the bag. Now I should say the assembly of this chair is the most difficult of any chair that we've looked at in this video. And uh, it is though, in some ways, pretty similar to the organization of like a Helinox chair because it's shock corded metal pieces that all kind of feed into these plastic hubs. But before you put on the fabric portion of the chair, you have to assemble these two extra little poles and insert them in the back of the chair to give it some extra rigidity. And so once you do this extra step, then you are ready to take the fabric part and put it on top of the metal frame. And in order to do that, then you're gonna take these little clips, and this is kind of a unique feature as well. There's like a little pin on the end of the pole, and then this clip just kind of fastens into place as you can see here. To get in and out of the chair, there's these little specific hold points that you can use that do make it easier to get in and out of. And I should also mention that there is a little pocket and a water bottle or cup holder in the side of the chair. I also wanted to show you the strap system because the strap system that allows this chair to recline is really unique and it provides a nice amount of tension, which is important if you wanna actually be leaning back in this chair in a comfortable way. And I think that the way that they've put this chair together is just so interesting because in my experience, it also gives it really good lumbar support because when you lie back in the chair, this area I'm showing with my hand kind of pushes up into that middle lumbar area of your back such that it's supporting you even while you're leaning back, which I think is just a really thoughtful and well thought out design. This also does have a, an adjustable headrest that you can kind of take off and move around on the chair, which of course gives you some extra neck support. So overall, when we talk about the comfort of this chair, this is an extremely comfortable chair. It is a little bit difficult to get in and out of if you compare it with a simpler chair, like a standard camp chair, um, or even like the Alps Mountaineering chair that we showed before. But the comfort in the lumbar area, the, the ability to rock it and lean way back in this chair, I think you could definitely take a nice nap in this chair, especially if you have something to put your feet up on. And overall, it's just really comfortable. I should mention that your view is a little bit obstructive if you look side to side because of the poles and the way this chair is set up, but I don't think that'll bother most people too much. And let's talk about also the, the feet of this chair, because in some ways they're a little bit similar to like the Helinox Chair Zero, but as you can see, these are a lot thicker, and so I don't think that sinking into sand or dirt will be a huge problem. Overall, this is an extremely comfortable chair. However, it is also very expensive at $250. And so if price is no object, this is a good chair. Otherwise, it might be a bit pricey. Now let's talk about the Ozark Trail oversized folding chair. In other words, the Walmart chair. Now this comes in a fairly standard stuff sack and it's really easy to set up. You just take it straight out of the stuff sack and then just kind of lift up and unfold it and you're done. It is a fairly comfortable chair and it's actually the most comfort, uh, the most easy one, I should say, to get in and out of. The lumbar support it has is not as good as something like the Nemo and it does not have as high of a back. So it doesn't have as much head or neck support as something like the Alps Mountaineering chair, 
but overall it is a fairly comfortable chair and it sits pretty high off the ground which some people will like but i think it's a really interesting comparison to compare this chair to the alps mountaineering chair because other than the higher back and the footrest that comes with the alps mountaineering they're very similar so for example it has the same 600 denier polyester material and it has the same steel uh, tube style frame and it also has similar feet pads here so like the overall design and structure of these two chairs are very similar. I should mention that my Ozark Trail chair here does have some more wear and tear, and that's partially just because I've had it for over 10 years, but some wear and tear for this type of chair over time is to be expected. But overall, it's in fairly decent shape, and I think this Ozark Trail chair, for what you, what you pay for it at $15 or so, is a pretty comfortable and really good value for a chair for car camping or front country camping. Now, if I was starting from scratch and I didn't have any camping chairs at all, what would I do? I personally would just buy the $15 Walmart chair. So that's the one I'm sitting in right now. And you might have some objections. You might think to yourself, well, I'm not sure about the durability of these chairs. Am I gonna have to buy a new one every year? I've actually had this chair for about 12 years or so. And sure, it's got some wear and tear to it, but it's still in pretty good shape and it works just fine for sitting. And uh, if you think about the materials, that actually makes sense. It has a steel frame and it's got this 600 denier polyester, like thick fabric material. And so this could last quite a few more years and it was just 15 bucks. And so it really comes down to value. And I'm not one who will always recommend the cheapest option as the best option. But in this case, for me anyway, I think the cheapest option is kind of also the best option. Now I understand if you need a backpacking chair, that this chair is just not gonna work for you because it's too heavy, right? And you would want something else like maybe the, the Zero chair from Helinox or the Chair Zero, I guess they call it because that's much lighter, right? And that's gonna be a lot better for backpacking. But when I go backpacking, I don't take a chair, and so I don't need that. And if I'm just using it for car camping, then I think this is actually better because it's easier to set up, and uh, I don't really have to worry about it as much because it's so cheap. If something goes wrong, I could just buy another one to replace it. And so that's part of it. Another part of it is comfort, right? So how does comfort come into play here? Obviously, if you want the most comfortable camp chair, and you don't care about the money, then the Nemo chair is gonna be the best option because it's just unbelievably comfortable. But to me, I get about 80%, maybe 70% as much comfort out of this chair compared to that one. And for an extra $230 or so, that's just not really worth it to me. Just think of all of the things that you could buy with that money. And if we're just talking camping gear here, like actually you might be able to see this tent behind me. This is the Skyward 4 REI tent. I got this on sale for about $230. So if you get a good deal, you might even be able to get a solid tent for the difference between this chair and the Nemo chair. So I think that just puts it into perspective a little bit. And so for me, if I was starting from scratch, didn't have any chairs, I'd probably start with just the Walmart one but your experience might differ. So I encourage you to let me know what you think in the comments below. And I hope I'll see you next time for our next video on Wednesday. So hit the like button for us, subscribe if you haven't done that already, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.